Praise the Lord, everybody, and greetings to all the family at Camp C, family and friends, brothers in Christ that are watching. Thank you for the opportunity to present my testimony to you. It's a pleasure to share the goodness of God and all that he's done in my life. Um, my name is Anthony, for those that don't know. I've been coming to Camp C for about five years now. It's coming into my fifth year, but I've been walking with the Lord for seven years. Uh, so when I was when I was 20, when I was 20, I grew up in an Orthodox home. My father was Greek Orthodox, but my mum was a Catholic, but we followed the tradition of the Orthodox, went to church Christmas and Easter twice a year, but never read the Bible, never knew anything about God, was never taught anything really about God. Um, grew up in a, a Christian school, but Christian studies was in one ear and out the other. That was the bludge class for me. So I, I never really paid attention to anything uh, about Christianity growing up. But uh, when I was coming into my teens, I started to make one wrong decision after the other. I started to mix, blend in with the wrong crowd, started to people please, make the wrong choices, uh, started to do, use party drugs, I started to get involved with parties and my life just started going downhill very fast. This is a long story short, came to the point where I was about 18, 19 from memory, got out of some really bad friendships, really bad relationship. I left my full-time job in real estate to start a start a business with my best friend at the time. Then as soon as I left my job, as soon as we'd started the business, me and my best friend had a big falling out. I'd moved into a new house with my family, so it was like I was like a reset in my life. And I stepped back from all of my friends who were using drugs at the time. I didn't want to be involved with that crowd anymore. I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to you know, change my life, but I didn't know how. I had no friends, no job, no future. I had all this time on my hands, didn't know what to do. I used all my time. I remember from morning and night, I'd just go for a walk around Piedmont where we, where we lived and I would just listen to motivational speakers, uh, try to motivate myself for life, but no one gives you the answers. You know, the things of this world will give you pleasure for a moment, but we all know they're temporary. Nothing, nothing lasts. Then one day I met up with an old friend of mine who actually has an Orthodox background, but he read some of the Bible. You know, it's not very common that Greek Orthodox read the Bible. And I met up with him. He happened to be going through the same thing I was going through. So we started to really connect. And it was a God thing because we weren't close at the time. But the time we started to speak was like we were both at this rock bottom place. And we just connected so well. We would meet up. I remember every night we'd meet up from about seven o'clock at night and we'd talk until about one, two in the morning. We'd go for a coffee. We'd go for dinner. We'd go and sit on the waterfront and just talk all night and really connect. And he started to share with me about God. And, you know, my heart was a little bit soft, a little bit sensitive, you know, open to the, to the idea of God at the time. Uh, but to me, it was, it was a very distant, very distant thought. Uh, but I remember one night, very, very, very clearly, we were sitting in Piemont um, and we we're looking at, you know, all the yachts and the city lights and the stars. And I remember telling him, you know, I want to make an, it's, I, I want to make something of my life. I want to achieve something in this life. And he looked at me and he said, very, very soberly, he said, Anthony, you know, one day everything that you see is going to pass away and we will be judged for everything that we do. And in that moment, the fear of God came in my heart and I started to be aware of the presence of God just in that moment. And another friend that was with us laughed at the time. He said, oh, you know, he doesn't believe in God, you know, just leave him. But that shook me. That night I went home terrified that I had to be right with God. And that's all he said. A few weeks later, a month later, we, we met up again. I was dropping him home one night. And he said, before he got out of the car, he said to me, Anthony, you know, before you were born, God knew you. And he, he held you and he said, this is Anthony. And he put you into the world. And I felt the love of God come upon me. I, so strongly as he left the car, I just felt the, like the presence of God. I was very not familiar with the presence of God, but I felt this overwhelming peace. And I felt like I was known by God. And whether or not he knew what he was talking about or not, I realized after Jeremiah chapter one, that's what the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. He said, before I formed you in, the, in your mother's womb, I knew you. So he's speaking the word of God to me. And that just filled my heart. So I had these two things working in me, the fear of God and the love of God. And that drove me. Eventually, I bought a Bible. I started to read the Bible very slowly. I couldn't really understand it. But I started to pray. I started to talk to God. 
it was it felt very strange for me very foreign to me but i believe it was like faith was opened up faith was birthed in me something was birthed in me and i was i was god i just belonged to god and slowly i started to feel very convicted of my sin i stopped smoking cigarettes we would pray together we'd have a cigarette but i felt like i, I loved god but i just didn't know and slowly i felt that conviction i said something's not right but i didn't have anyone to tell me anthony cigarettes is, is not is not good I just had that conviction, like my spirit was born again and I stopped smoking. I felt dirty when I was swearing, so I stopped swearing. I stopped watching things I shouldn't be watching. I stopped watching movies that I shouldn't be watching. And I started to devote more and more of my time to reading the Bible. I started a business with my with this, this other friend, this new friend. Um, we had a business together, did that for about a year and a half. But I was still on this pursuit of you know, making wealth, making something of myself in the world. But at the same time, I had this pull in my heart. So it was like a tug of war, following the Lord, following the things of this world. But I just devoted myself to following God. And something in me felt very strange. I didn't want my business to succeed. It was like something inside me didn't want this business to succeed. It didn't. It ended up not succeeding. We'd sort of closed that business. And around this time is when I uh, started looking for a church. So I started looking for a church. I didn't have anyone to talk to. Didn't know how, you know, what, what, where to start. I went to Orthodox. That's all I knew. I had a meeting with the priest. I went to confession. I confessed all my sins. I started to open up all my sins to him. I was weeping before him. And, you know, I'd walk around the church looking at all the icons and I'm trying to find God and I can't find him. I just can't find the presence of God there. And slowly I read the Bible. It says, you shall not make any graven image, things in heaven, things on the earth, things under, uh, in the sea. So I realized this is not a God thing. So I looked for another church and I went to six churches. I went to six different churches. And every time I would go to the church, I would always speak with the, the pastor or the elder. After the service, I would wait, wait for everyone to leave. I'd go straight. As soon as the pastor is available, I'll, I'll go to him. I'll say, I, I need to be saved. What do I do to be saved? I would always speak the, the word, try to try to uh, receive for you know salvation. And no one could give me a straight answer from the Bible. No one could say, Anthony, let's sit down and let's open up the Bible and let's go through the salvation plan of God. No one can do that. No one could do that. And so I left very frustrated. I had one conversation with a pastor in um, in an Anglican church. I remember waiting at the end of a youth service and I and I spoke with a pastor and I said to him, Pastor, you know, the Bible says about the mark of the beast, you know, we, we, we can't take the mark of the beast. And he'd said to me, you know, Anthony, the book of Revelation, it's actually for speaking about Nebuchadnezzar's time. It's in a different, you know, generation. It's got nothing to do with us. It doesn't affect our relationship with God. And I said, that's not right that's not what the Bible says. And I left very frustrated. You know, remember, I don't have fellowship. I don't have a pastor. I don't have anyone to turn to except God himself. And I remember I was in the car park after that service and I was just praying. I said, Lord, I'm disheartened. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what to do. I feel like you're telling me to go to church. I needed, I needed to be in fellowship. I needed to speak to someone about all that I was going through. Remember, I'd left all my friends. I'd left my business. And I was here just with this time. And, and the Bible trying to seek God. And so I'd pretty much given up and I would just watch my sermons online. Any, any teaching I could find online, any preaching online, I would just listen. I would just receive from, you know, uh, from, from online. One day I came across a, a testimony shared by a brother, Johnny James in, in the States. He spoke about how he evangelized the Muslim in an airport at, because of the times. And then I started to watch, you know, all these, um, these sermons and I thought, like, well, something was different there. Something was different. I said, okay, one more. I'm going to see if there's a church like this in Sydney. So I looked up Pentecostal Church in Sydney. I had no idea what Pentecostal was. I found the website, the church. I looked up Pastor Stan on YouTube. I said, I just want to make sure these, this matches. You know, I'd been to six churches. Uh, you know, I was, I was in that place of a bit skeptical. And I found his preaching, The Fire of the Holy Spirit. It was a five-minute sermon they put on YouTube. And I said, okay, something's different here. So I went to the church. That morning, went to the church that night, and a few weeks later, I kept, I kept going, I kept coming, and I met my my father-in-law, Michael is my father-in-law now. When I met him, I remember, he would talk to me, he'd always pray for me after the service. He was excited because he, he found a Greek, a Greek boy in the church, so I would talk to him, and I said, 
brother, I have one question for you. And I said, what's your denomination? Because I've been to six churches and everyone teaches a different thing and no one can give me an answer from the Bible. I said, what's your denomination? What do you believe? And he said, Anthony, sit down and open your Bible. No one has said that to me before. I sat down and I opened up my Bible and he said, go to the book of Acts. I believe it's chapter 13. It says the disciples in Antioch were first called Christians. He said, Anthony, I'm Christian. Oh, and I felt a weight lifted off my shoulders and said, teach me, teach me. And so we started the Bible study. I had other brothers, pastor, um, sharing the word with me at the time also, and, you know, really helped me. And I came to the point of the baptism. And I said, brother, brother Michael, you know, I was baptized as a child. I don't know if I need to be baptized again. And he said, well, the scripture says you need to repent and baptize. The scripture says you need to believe and baptize. And but I said, but I was baptized as a child. The scripture was close to me. And I remember at the time I was speaking to that, that friend who had evangelized me initially. I, I was speaking to him about it. He said, you don't need to be baptized. You were already baptized. Don't be brainwashed. You know, I had a, a lot of pressure on that side and I didn't know I was confused. But the scripture says what the scripture says. And I remember one day, so frustrated, I got up out of my bed and I went down on my knees and I banged my hand on the floor and I said, Jesus, for the first time, I just called upon his name directly. Like I was speaking to a friend. I said, Jesus, I don't know if I'm baptized correctly. Please give me a sign. Speak to me and tell me to be baptized if I need to be, because I don't know. I was very honest. I got up and I opened up my Bible. Opened it up, and there was one line that was highlighted on the whole page. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 36. See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? It was when the, the eunuch was baptized by Philip. And that was, that was, I felt like it was just me and the Lord in the whole world. Like he'd spoken to me. And I was so thankful. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That weekend, I was baptized. One year later... I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was struggling because I was trying to work and it was very frustrating. Why aren't I filled with the Holy Spirit? You know, Lord, why aren't you? And that's not the approach. It says it's a gift that's given by faith. You just have to believe and you have to receive it. So it took me a year to, to, to wrestle with myself almost. And then after a year, we were at the conference 2018 in Canberra. A few days before we went, it was in the, the, the summer holidays. I was reading the word and the Lord spoke to me very clearly about the Holy Spirit. And it's like the scripture opened to me. And the Lord spoke to me, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit through the scripture. And I received it like a rima came in my heart and I believed it. And I said, the Lord's going to fill me with the Holy Spirit. The next day we had the fellowship come to, to our house and I, uh, you know, for, for prayer. And I said, the Lord spoke to me, he's going to fill me with the Holy Spirit. And so we all prayed. We all sing to the Lord. We prayed, nothing happened. And the next day we went to the conference. First night, went down to the front to pray with Sister Frida. Didn't happen. The next night, one brother from Brisbane Church came to me. I'd never met him before. He said to me, the devil is trying to steal your inheritance. Don't let the devil steal your inheritance. He'd never met me before. I said, thank you, brother. The next night we had service, Brother Woodward was, was preaching and we were in the worship service. I was in my seat and I was singing and I was trying to connect to God, but I could really feel this dark, almost like a dark cloud resting above my head. And I remember he said, the devil's trying to steal your inheritance. So instead of just asking the Lord to, to fill me with the spirit, I started to rebuke the spirits and I rebuke the spirit of doubt. I rebuke the spirit of unbelief in Jesus name. As soon as I started to rebuke these spirits, I felt like the heaven just started to open and I felt like my faith started to rise and I started to believe. And then the music stopped and the worship service stopped and I was Ah, oh, just I could feel like I was connecting to the Lord really strongly. And then Brother Woodward comes up and he says, hold on, musicians come back on the stage. God's not finished. The Lord has more work to do. He got off the stage, didn't start preaching, and they started to sing. As soon as they started to sing in a moment, the Lord baptized me with the Holy Spirit. And I fell on my knees and I started to worship God. And I just surrendered my whole life to him. The Lord is just working in our lives, faith to faith, glory to glory. The one thing I've noticed in my whole walk with God, these, these seven short years, is God is working in our hearts to reveal himself to us personally. And he does that through his word.
He wants us to draw closer to him through his word. It's not something external from his word. It's not separate from his word. Like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, when they, their eyes were kept from recognizing Jesus, they couldn't recognize him. Even though they, they were disciples of his, they'd walk with him. But it said he was, he opened the scriptures to them. He interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And so that's how we are coming to the Lord. It's through his word. And I, I pray that someone was blessed by this testimony. God has done so much, so many wonderful things in my life. There's so many things I could share. But I pray that that someone was blessed and God's not finished with his church. He has he has a plan. There's a prophetic, there's there's the prophecy that we have from his word. And like the Bible says, he's faithful and none of his words return to him void. Amen. He's faithful to finish the work that he started. God bless you all. I love you.